Hello my friends and welcome to Fishery. I'm Alexander Williamson and today we're going to be talking about a really interesting and very unusual shrimp that is entering the hobby. Now it kind of made an appearance a decade ago or so. Uh, it was available on a few sites and then it kind of just disappeared and that is the green filter shrimp or the green fan filter shrimp or the green lace shrimp, the green lace mini filter shrimp. It has a lot of common names, but we're talking today about Adiopsis pilipes or pilapes. And this shrimp is a really fascinating shrimp because it looks exactly like someone took an Amano shrimp and then crossed it with one of those bamboo fan algae eating shrimp that is a filter feeder. And it has the special ability of being able to use its hands as fans or fold them in half and use them kind of like a pincher to pick up debris off the ground and eat it. And they're actually a white water or hill stream tropical shrimp that comes in a bunch of different color morphs that are all natural. So it totally depends on where it's collected. But let's talk about them in this video. Let's look at them. Let's talk about their care. And let's talk about uh, where they came from, okay? All right, so let's look at some of these color morphs because some of them are absolutely beautiful, really striking and bold patterns that they can have, which is really cool because if you've seen the bamboo filter feeding shrimp, one, they get pretty darn big, somewhere between four and five inches at their max. And for some people, that's a little large for their aquarium, especially if you're doing like a 20 gallon or something. Uh, they, they're definitely more uh, at home in the 30, 40, 55 even. And they're kind of a uh, feature shrimp because they're not going to reproduce. You're not going to have a colony of them in your tank. And that holds true with these as well. They're really beautiful and they have the same similar traits of filter feeding out of the water as the bamboo shrimp. And they actually come from a really wide ranging uh, host of locations as you probably saw with the different color morphs. That's not because of any breeding or lines that humans have had anything to do with. It's just because they have different uh, different habitats in the wild and they range all the way from southern Indonesia and Malaysia, Borneo and those islands down there in the uh, deep tropics and all the way up into the northern Philippines and all the way across to mainland China and Vietnam and all the islands kind of in between they've kind of showed up. So their range is not super defined uh, scientifically, but they have been found a whole lot of places, and over time they've been exported from a number of these places as different shrimps with different names. Uh, even though they were scientifically described in 1938, and they've been known by the scientific world for quite some time. Now, they only reach about 3 inches max, which is still a pretty good sized shrimp considering a mono shrimp tend to reach maybe two inches and our neocaridina and caridina bee and taiwan bee shrimp uh tangerine tigers uh crystal shrimp those kinds of things only tend to reach about an inch sometimes an inch and a half and some of them even less uh if you look at some of the babalti and other forms of shrimp in the hobby but these uh are able to reach kind of that intermediate size have a really cool color to them and then because they live in those island locations in freshwater streams they actually have evolved to hold on in a lot of flow so they can live in a hill stream setup so if you're doing a setup with something like rainbow fish or you know hill stream loaches or something like that they would be perfectly at home with even a power head going in their tank and actually they need that food suspended in the water a bit like the bamboo filter feeding shrimp do or sometimes they're called Singapore flower shrimp or uh, sometimes they're called bamboo fan shrimp but regardless of what you call those other shrimp these have a similar need and very similar care except they're smaller and they have a few tricks up their sleeve in that they are a wide-ranging 
shrimp in where they're found like we talked about. So they've also evolved the ability to pick up things off the ground and eat a little bit of detritus, eat off of uh, scavenging, off of algae and other things, a lot more so than your typical fan or filter shrimp that you see in the hobby uh, elsewhere. So they're kind of a cool feature piece or showpiece shrimp for a nice aquascape or a delicate uh, ecosystem where it's, you know, calm and, uh, you know, an Iwagumi aquascape maybe where it's a little understated and not super complex so that they don't get lost and they're actually the star of the show at their, you know, three inches long. But Let's talk about what else they need in their care, the water parameters and so forth, and a few other little quirks about this incredible shrimp. All right, now because these shrimp are found in such diverse habitats, islands, some of them small, some of them large, some of them just trickles of a stream, and some of them raging rivers, others just meandering rivers, they've evolved to live a lot of places. What they do need in their tank, which is recommended being a, a minimum of 10 gallons so that they do have sort of a, a large volume of water to their body size to graze particles out of, is uh, they are able to live in water that's flowing. Like I said, you can put a power head in there or a hang off the back filter, a canister filter with heavy outflow. And ideally, you want to put something like a rock or some wood, some sort of little perch off to the side of that flow, right near that flow, so that they can sit there and basically reach out and catch some of the debris that's flying past them as the water churns in the tank. You can feed them like crumbled spirulina or little algae wafers, uh, any sort of little shrimp pellets or flakes you can kind of crumble and just float in the water and they'll eat those or these shrimp will also do some grazing on algae and on plants as well and they'll hold on to stalks of uh, leaves or larger plants and they'll use that as their perch as well so if that's part of your aquascape or part of your tank setup it looks really cool to have them uh, just sitting there and kind of doing their karate kid wax on wax off uh, little pattern they do with their hands and then they've got specialized hands that actually grab from their fans to their mouth or from the ground to their mouth and they kind of self feed uh, with those. Now as for the actual water what the chemistry should be like they are really unfussy shrimp, which is very nice. They can live in a wide range of different parameters, all the way from around 6.5 pH, all the way up to 7.5 or even 8 pH. So they can live in harder or softer water, but they do need to have a little bit of calcium and a little bit of carbonate. So KH and GH, right around five or six at least, uh, just so that uh, they can make their exoskeleton and molt because the bigger the shrimp, the more, uh, you know, material they actually have to graze and have to also extract from the water to make that exoskeleton from. So remember, they are a little larger than your typical, uh, you know, a mono shrimp. Although, some of them do stay in the two inch range while others reach that three inch range and just like a monos vary in size, they will vary in size. Now, as I said, their diet, pretty unfussy as well. And the TDS of the water or the total dissolved solids uh, in the water, anywhere from 150 all the way up to three or 400 is totally fine. And the temperature that they need to be kept at, anywhere from 70 degrees all the way up to 80. So somewhere between, uh, say, 24 to 29 Celsius or something like that uh, is totally fine and they'll be able to thrive in those conditions with warmer water leading to generally a little bit shorter lives but also faster growing shrimp and with a shrimp that isn't going to be reproducing in your freshwater tank it's something to consider, maybe keeping it on the cooler end of things if you want it to stick around for a while. 
So other than that, these shrimp are really low uh, maintenance in their needs other than needing some suspended food in the water column. So if you have something like pseudomagills or little tetras or maybe like a hatchet fish or some sort of small killifish or pencil fish in your tank, they'll be right at home with those fish feeding from the top of the water, any of the little bits and particles, little pieces of flake food that kind of break away and fall into the flow of your filter they'll be totally fine just grabbing those but it is a good idea to supplement something like uh, a specialized shrimp food for them so that they're getting all those essentials for their exoskeleton and their shrimpy needs that a lot of those foods take into account so Beyond this, I don't have much to say about these shrimp in that I've only kept them a, a few times. I've had a handful of them over the years, but they are a really beautiful shrimp and a really elegant shrimp and one that I think uh, is just not getting enough t attention in the hobby, but that I do see becoming more and more popular as uh, people are looking for a peaceful shrimp, one that's not going to be uh, you know, attacking little fish or eating the eggs of fish and things like that as much as some of the other medium-sized shrimp or prawns or crabs uh, or uh, forbid the crayfish you know those are uh, all sorts of trouble uh, to your fish in your tank even though they are really beautiful they can just be a handful so these are kind of a, a way to have a larger bodied shrimp or uh, invertebrate in your tank that's also polishing your water and keeping it nice and clean uh, and providing that spotlight you know rock star animal feature in your aquarium so I hope you guys enjoyed this little rundown on this incredible creature, this beautiful centerpiece shrimp. And hopefully you guys will tune in again to like, subscribe, or even share the content here. Thank you so much to my members. Uh, it's only $1.99 to support what we do here at the channel. And you guys mean so much to me. You're the reason this stuff gets made. Have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you next time.